Okay, good evening. Tonight I'll be talking about two of the articles related to the myth of the melting pot. Uh, these are the readings in Rereading America for uh, the week of November 2nd. The first article is written by historian George Fredrickson. It's called Models of American Ethnic Relations, a Historical Perspective. And the second article is called Deconstructing America and is written by political commentator Patrick Buchanan. Uh, so let's get into the articles. The first article, The Myth of American Ethnic Relations. Professor H Fredrickson, he's a historian, so his article uh, uh, ha has a lot of historical information about America uh, back from uh, the, the birth of America, uh, the, the colonial times of America, and how uh, Americans related ethnically or racially to each other. And it goes all the way to the present day. He he asserts that there are we have four basic models of American ethnic relations, and it kind of progresses in a historical path from earliest to the present. The earliest is probably probably the most hated and the most controversial uh, in today's time. If we look back at it, back at it, is called the myth. Excuse me, the model of a of a ethnic hierarchy, or you may think of that as uh, the myth of racial supremacy of white Americans uh, over uh, the minorities in, in the American land. So, in that area, uh, the, the history or basically society in America in early times was basically uh, based on hierarchy, right? The whites were superior, and uh, a, a lot of the minority races were not superior. And there was like a very classification, right? You had the Northern Europeans. Uh, uh, you know, a British or English descent, uh, a lot of them were basically considered as superior. They considered themselves superior. Uh, so basically the, the rich uh, uh, colonial uh, uh, owners of uh, big uh, mansions and, and uh, plantations, uh, they considered themselves superior. And they considered themselves, you know, the founders of America or the founders of democracy. A little bit of hypocrisy there, but they, they considered themselves superior and all other ethnicities were actually considered lower. And that included, uh, unfortunately, the Native Americans, uh, African Americans who were uh, uh, considered as slaves, uh, basically uh, and any other immigrants who came over, including, you know, the Eastern Europeans, uh, the, the Southern uh, Europeans, as they came over, they are also uh, regarded in an inferior manner, uh, to, a manner against uh, compared to the Northern Europeans. So that persisted for a long time. So that's what I was meaning about how uh, our country, unfortunately, we had to kind of live with the fact that our legacy is actually uh, built on a lot of it's built on racism, right? You know, unfortunately, that we had to, uh, you know, kind of come to terms with today, right? A lot of us are really good people today. We we, we would say, oh, why? You know, my, uh, that's just my ancestors. I'm a good person. Uh, I'm not really a racist. So, you know, that, of course, that's true. But it's just something that we had to come to terms with because to understand our country, understand where, where we're headed today, our past, our future, and pres our present, our future. We just had to understand, our, uh, you know, our racism at, at, as an unfortunate uh, legacy and something that, that still persists today that we must still come to terms with. So just even though we don't really like talk about it or we just kind of oh we kind of roll our eyes and say it's just something you just had to kind of turn returns with as a citizen of, of America and the world uh, so basically as the times progressed uh, a lot of these uh, southern and eastern Europeans uh, kind of uh, injected themselves into society you know that they had they found their way to society so of course a lot of the northern Europeans had to acknowledge them but they still wanted to assimilate that so that's the second model it's called uh, cultural assimilation, based or one way assimilation, as Frederickson calls it, basically, uh, basically one way where the white way was superior, uh, the, the the Northern European way, uh, uh, the original American way, as they, they say, was superior, and basically all the other ethnicities had, had to basically assimilate, or actually be like uh, the Northern Europeans, right? Basically assimilate for the sake of our great country, our great democracy, right? Of course, but of course, under all underlying all this is that even that earlier model, ethnic hierarchy or basically racial supremacy, supremacy still continues, right? So even though that's the first model, that model still just keeps on continuing. So kind of look at that as a progression of models, yet the earlier models still continue. And they, in voila, they continue on to today, right? You know, the ethnic hierarchy, the racial supremacy model, even in many aspects still continue today, right? Uh, whether it's legally or, or just attitude-wise. So the second model, uh, the one-way assimilation, is also controversial. That's like your myth of the melting pot, right? As we were talking about, it's basically where um, uh, the ethnicities would actually have to kind of merge themselves in, into that 
a scalding hot melting pot and kind of mixed together and emerged as an American, right? You know, like everyone's all Americans. They're all the same way. However, we all know the controversy, right? When they all emerge as Americans, that's actually the vision of white Americans, right? You know, the, uh, the dominant culture, right? And of course, and that's not too good. Uh, it's good in a way, right? Because it will light way a lot, a lot of American, all the Americans follow the American gene. They want to become a force their way into America and create a great America. So they, so there was good aspects of the myth of the melting pot, right? Like everyone was all unified as, as we went through uh, the history of the USA. But yeah, however, the bad side of that is actually that people are not really alike, right? It's, it's not really good to, to, uh, to erase people's differences too, right? And that's even worse when they actually consider the like people uh, to be molded on the the white or an American way, right? That's controversy too. It's not really a great way to be molded into. It's not a great thing to be molded into, right? You know, a lot of the minorities kind of felt uh, disenfranchised or uh, negatively affected by that. So you basically had, uh, just to review, we had uh, ethnic hierarchy or the myth of racial supremacy was the first model. That was how America was founded upon. And then they moved into one way assimilation, uh, tr trying to uh, forge a new a new uh, powerful unified America, trying to get all the immigrants to basically uh, follow that uh, assimilate into into Amer into becoming Americans. And later, as we go through today, right, as we go through the times, especially with the civil rights movement, uh, women's rights, uh, immigrant rights, uh, we basically emerge into a new uh, model, right, called cultural pluralism, pluralism, or uh, multiculturalism, right? That's basically recognizing we're unified as Americans, of course. However, we also recognize that everyone, everyone's different ethnicities and their cultures are all very unique and people should embrace their own original uh, ethnicity and culture and basically revel in it, right? And actually that makes, makes it very great. America is great through diversity. We're unified, yet we're also diverse, right? So that's cultural pluralism and multiculturalism. And Frederson thinks that's the best way to go. Uh, so he's kind of like uh, very uh, liberal in that sense where he's, he feels, a lot of us feel that, hey, that's the best way to go. Let, let's celebrate our cultures, be proud of our cultures, and, and uh, yet, you know, still be unified as Americans. And that's really great to build our great country, yet also uh, to basically celebrate our differences, celebrate our different cultures, right? revel in it, right? Recognize that, you know, embrace that, right? Don't be ashamed of that, right? And be like that, right? So that's cultural pluralism or multiculturalism. And he feels that that's the best way that we should go, uh, that we should be doing moving forward today. There's a fourth model. Uh, it's called group separatism. And that's more, today is more theoretical where a lot of uh, oppressed minorities feel that even though, since we're not really respected as a, Americans don't really respect us, well, why don't we set, uh, forge ourselves into a separate nation? And that was recognized in the past by some past groups like the, the Black Panthers or the basically the, uh, the, the, the civil rights movements where a, a lot of the black people wanted to, uh, they really were, unsat were unsatisfied. Yeah, hey, even though we had civil rights gains, uh, we're still oppressed by America. So basically we still want to forge a separate African nation, right? You know, maybe go back to Africa or basically uh, forge a nation uh, within within the USA, right? But be a separate nation. But that's more of a theoretical perspective. It's even, even though there is a number of groups who want to be separate. And of course you had to listen and to discuss uh, what they think is that they, have, they, they may have great valid views on that. So you have had an open critical mind when you think about those groups, right? You know, why are they upset? Why do they want to separate from the USA? Why do they feel disrespected? But it's more theoretical. It's, it's people are talking about more in a theoretical way that, hey, let's separate ourselves and you know get more respect for, from the wider America and kind of separate our, our groups uh, into theoretically a separate nation, right? So that's something to think about too. So basically you have those four models, ethnic hierarchy, uh, one-way assimilation, and today's cultural pluralism or multiculturalism. So it's basically kind of moves along historical path and also group separatism, another theoretical uh, model too. So basically the, these models kind of move in a historical path, yet keep in mind that the attitudes of ethnic hierarchy or racial supremacy, that's the controversial part. It still continues today, right? You know, even though legally there's been a lot of gains or socially a lot of attitudes, unfortunately has continued on today. And we could even put that in historical perspective, right? You know, when Barack Obama was, was nominated in 2008, uh, you know, to end a long reign of Republican rule, uh, under George uh, George Bush, Barack Obama said, "Yeah, this is a new day, right? We had our first black president on the first black president, and this is a new way way where we're moving forward. Where we're, we're very multicultural and racism is over. It, it was very hopeful, yet uh, it was kind of uh, ominous, right? In the fact that a lot of the 
uh, the white Americans who objected to that sort of like kept quiet. And then, and then they sort of like uh, showed their objection in 2012 when Obama lost the House and Senate. Right. So he basically became uh, less powerful. Right. Because he basically uh, was a president. Yet he did not have control of the House and Senate. That was in 2012, even though he got reelected. So you can kind of see that that creeping or that ominous thing where a lot of the white Americans, uh, the majority were not happy. Right. But they had to kind of keep quiet. A lot of them were keeping quiet until it exploded, unfortunately, in 2016. Right. Where uh, we, where Hillary Clinton was thinking she was going to win. Right. Uh, she, because what Donald Trump was denigrating a, a women, uh, a lot of minorities and kind of really bullying, showing that bullying attitude. But he really got a very great base of people who believed in him. Right. And that's a controversial part. Right. And then suddenly Americans, many Americans were shocked that uh, you had a lot of these white Americans who believed in the racial supremacy or basically believed in, uh, you know, the, it, the one the one way of racial supremacy or one way assimilation. So in a way. They, they never actually left, right? They were kind of buried or suppressed in 2008 by Barack Obama. Yet in 2016, they were returned in full force. Yet gladly today with the recent election, we have a, a huge majority, what, what uh, almost 78 million plus, as opposed to Trump's uh, 5 million less of people who actually want to go into that uh, area of better race, race relations. A lot of people want to get into better race relations. Uh, so like that kind of balances out. So today there's a little bit of hope there but just kind of keep in mind that uh, uh, there's still a lot of people in the USA who object to that view of cultural pluralism, or they had basically not really necessarily object, but with their attitudes or their their personalities might suddenly uh, not agree with you, right? And how do you how do you as a critical thinker how do you approach those people who who don't agree with you, right? Uh, they they may agree with you in some theories, however, some attitudes, and you they may be think something you don't like, but they may be your friends or people you respect, right? So how do you or they're basically your fellow Americans. So how do you actually re reconcile or actually move? How do we move forward as a nation where there's a lot of people, like half the people may disagree with you. Half the people in the nation still may disagree with you. Even though Biden won the election, there's still half the people, roughly half the people who disagree with him or maybe some things that you feel, right? They may agree with you in some things, but they may disagree with you in some other things. Uh, so that sets the stage for the next article, right? It's by conservative uh, uh, Republican Party. He, guy named Patrick Buchanan, he ran for president uh, several times uh, in the late 1990s, in the 1990s and, and 2000. Uh, he was unsuccessful, yet he's also a very respected political commentator. He has served uh, under past presidents. In the past, in the, uh, has, he has been a staff member, a very well-respected staff member for past presidents, including President Reagan and Bush. And his name is Patrick Buchanan. And it's interesting in the fact that he's actually a conservative guy. So, someone you think, uh, someone you may not think you respect. But if you talk to him, and if you see him on TV, you're talking to him personally, he'll be very polite. He'd be a great guy, right? He wouldn't listen to you. Go, Oh, yes, that's true. However, I believe. So he's like a great critical thinker, just like you. Uh, so there are a lot of Republicans who are great critical thinkers too, right? They will listen to you, be very respectful of you, maybe even more respectful, respectful, respectful than, than your liberal friends, right? So they're 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 very bright. Even he could even be brighter and smarter than that, right? He's very bright. He has great views, and you have to listen to him because he he is a published author. He has written many books about uh, and is very conservative, of course, right? And his article is called "Deconstructing America," which we read, and he's kind of thinking, he's kind of giving a very interesting view that you may find repulsive. You you may not agree with. He's kind of saying that America, back to the Jamestown settlement, was not founded on democracy, equality, and diversity, right? It was basically founded on unity of the uh, unity uh, of, uh, you know, the, uh, basically the, the people who founded America were basically unified together and they basically kind of fouled off uh, to that diversity, right? They actually uh, unified based on uh, the, their common goals, which, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, it's kind of racist there, right? It's kind of like, they're kind of like, uh, this is like the Republican Party, right? This is like the people who are saying, you know, like, we don't really care about equality, diversity, right? We actually became strong through our unified way of America, which is uh, the Republican way, right? Uh, so he kind of feels, and he's worried about diversity, right? He's thinking of diversity. As you go through the article, you see he's worried about diversity. Where it's so, it's so diverse that it actually tears us apart, right? Because people are always fighting against each other, right? You know, all these diverse uh, groups of minorities are, and also the minorities against the white Americans. They're, they're kind of like contending or they're fighting against each other. And he has valid, he may have valid views, right? Just listen, ha have an open mind towards what he's saying. Uh, you, this is something you may not agree with. You actually may, that may affect your reading, right? You may go, I don't even understand what he's saying, right? He's basically Republican, 
conservative writer who basically is worried about diversity, right? He thinks that that's not really unifying us, that those principles of equality, diversity, democracy are not really unifying us. It's sort of a deeper thing found uh, based on what our founding fathers believed, right? That unity, that unity of America, right, which was founded on that, uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot, a lot of the white Americans feel that that unity uh, was based uh, from the past, right? That that powerful unity of America, right? That that was uh, intent on basically uh, fighting away, uh, you know, the, the the diverse people, right? Or basically trying to unify under America to basically plow forward and, and be able to build a great America. So it's very controversial, but. Again, rereading America, right? You don't want to just read the, about the same articles about, you know, liberal articles about liberals and who just kind of agree with what you say. You got to read about people who disagree with you and basically confront that because there are like basically half of America would disagree with you, right? We live in a Bay Area where you think, oh, yeah, we all agree, we all agree. And then you're kind of like in that bubble, that comfortable bubble, like with all your friends, right? You hang around with people you agree with, right? You hang around what friends, even like teachers in school, a lot of the teachers are liberals, right? So basically you're you're taught by a lot of the teachers like us who, who are basically agreeing with what you feel, right? A lot of the teachers are minorities too, right? A lot of people in the Bay are in minorities yet. Suddenly when you go out to other parts of our country, right? Suddenly you see that majority of people who may not agree with you, right? And how do you deal with that, right? I, I also, I kind of have fun. I ask my students, right? How many of you want to go to college in the deep South, right? And you're sitting there with a bunch of white students and, and suddenly the white students start saying things that you disagree with or or, or, or repulsed by. Are you going to stand up there and, and, and fight for your rights? And how are you going to act towards them? Are you going to be civil? Because some of them may be your friends, right? They may be turn out to be great friends. Uh, so basically, but and there are people that you would deal with in life too, right? So you don't want to just yell at them or scream at them just like, uh, you know, and basically not listen to what they're saying, right? So P Patrick Buchanan represents the other side. So basically have an open mind when you read him, have an open mind when you read Frederickson and think about it too, right? Because the issue of race, you know, the issue of melting pot, the myth of the melting pot, race, ethnicity, racial supremacy still stays with us today. Unfortunately, it was as we learned, yet there's also hope there too, right? The recent presidential election. So think about that too, as we go through and think about too, right? Don't think that, just because the people around you agree with you that everyone is going to agree with you. There are people who disagree with you and there may be so many more, so much more than, than you, you can imagine. Maybe half the country may disagree with you in certain ways. They may agree with you in some things, but there may be other things they disagree with you. And you only find that out by discussing with them, right? You know, you got to see the whole person, right? You know, like it, we have political views, yet we're also people too. We have different views on culture. So just don't uh, judge someone just based on their political view, right? You got to kind of let them talk and let them and be critical. Think, listen to their different multiple perspectives, right? That's a heart of critical thinking. Listen to their different views and be open to it, right? Discuss that. Some may, some of you may have find common ground. Some may you decide not to agree with yet. Uh, it's uh, the key. The key is be open to multiple perspectives and that should be critical, be a critical thinker all your life you know, uh, to, to, to the day that you pass away, you know, so basically, and uh, so uh, basically that, that those two articles, I hope you enjoy reading them. And I hope to see uh, in a later homework assignment, I hope to see some of your responses and homework. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.